Hi there, folks. It's me, Anne, here. For those who don't know me, I wear the hat of a caseworker, and I'm very passionate about understanding and helping the individuals I work with. So today, I want to bring you a little bit closer to the world of Georgia. She is a, a sprightly little soul living in an independent community, much like the ones of our grandparents and our elderly friends might reside in. Georgia's story is filled with the joys and challenges that come with age, and it's my privilege to walk alongside her during her journey. So let's dive in into her world together, shall we? Georgia has been living in the community for about two years. She's always been an independent spirit, relishing her meals and maintaining a close bond with her family. However, recently some behavioral changes have raised some concerns. Georgia has missed her noon meals a few times and once um, even left her door open. And then during a recent visit, she also mistakenly called her grandson Jack by his father's name, David, which sometimes may not raise a lot of concerns with the name thing, um, but when you add it in with um, several of her other uh, and some signs and symptoms, it can be concerning. Georgia might be experiencing, however, something that we call mild cognitive impairment or MCI for short. MCI is a transitional stage between the expected cognitive decline of normal aging and some more serious conditions like Alzheimer's. So it's kind of in the middle there. MCI is not just forgetfulness, it is a deeper issue um, where symptoms can include difficulty in memory, language, and judgment. And while Georgia's physical health may seem intact, her mental health needs um, our attention. People with MCI, especially of Georgia's age, may be more pronounced memory issues and might struggle with tasks that once felt familiar. There will also be some difficulty in memory, challenges with language, and sometimes even judgment. It's crucial, though, to differentiate between ordinary age-related decline and something that's more serious going on. Spotting the signs of MCI early can make a significant difference in how it progresses. So think of this as something like a small leak in your home. If you catch it early, you're going to stay off the flood that's going to come, right? And while science hasn't given us a complete cure for MCI, we're not powerless against it. There are several paths to help manage and alleviate its symptoms. So imagine your brain as a muscle and it needs to have regular workouts. So cognitive training exercises act as these workouts and they can strengthen the mind. These exercises um, could be as simple as puzzles, memory games, or even certain apps that are just on your on their on your phone that is designed to challenge your brain. Additionally, there are specific medications that can be prescribed by doctors that can benefit. While they might not reverse MCI, they can actually help stabilize it and reduce some of the symptoms and possibly help the um, help stave off the progression or slow down the progression. Um, lifestyle, as in so many health concerns, plays a starring role as well. Consuming a balanced diet um, filled with brain-boosting foods, staying active with regular walks or exercises, and engaging in activities that stimulate the brain, like reading or learning a new hobby, can help in putting the brakes on this cognitive decline as well. But here's the thing, while treatments and routines are essential, nothing though can replace the warmth of understanding, the touch of a caring loved one, and the listening ear of a loved one. The emotional anchor that our family and friends provide can make the journey with MCI less daunting. Being surrounded by supportive family and friends who are there to reassure that to reassure and to understand and offer helping hand is without a doubt one of the most effective treatments anyone can ask for. And that's not just for MCI. That's for any kind of, of health care. Um, our bodies tend to heal when we're happy and feel loved and supported. So let's imagine Georgia as a vibrant flower in a garden. And just like every flower has unique needs to blossom, like sunlight and the right amount of water and care, Georgia needs specialized attention to thrive in her environment as well. To truly understand her situation, it would be wise for her family to seek the guidance of a neurologist or even a geriatric psychiatrist. 
think of these specialists as the expert gardeners who can identify exactly what Georgia's needs are going to be. So once they pinpoint the root of the changes that George is experiencing, they can tailor a care plan for her then from there. And these will be unique needs just to Georgia. And then Georgia and family and friends can, and, the, and her doctors can put those, that care plan in, into place. Um, so routine checkups and monitoring are also going to be essential, just as you check on their flowers health. Um, ensuring that it's not wilting or facing any kind of pest the, uh, to further uh, nurture George's well-being. Family counseling can also play a significant role. This could equip her close ones with not only the tools to help Georgia, but it can also go a long way to strengthening the bonds that they have with Georgia. So lastly, her environment is also crucial. Like a flower needing the right soil, Georgia needs a space where she's going to feel safe under and understanding and be and feel loved. She needs to be ensured that this will not only we need to ensure that this will not only provide a comfort, um, but also foster a sense of security and belonging for her. Each time we encounter someone like Georgia, it's like flipping through the pages of a book. Each behavior, each action, and each word is a chapter in our story. And just like we wouldn't judge a book by any single page, obviously, or, you know, the saying, don't judge a book by its cover, we shouldn't define someone by a single act. So, George, uh, so Georgia's journey is a gentle reminder of this. When we take a moment to listen, to truly understand, we unearth the reasons behind these chapters. With a heart full of patience, an open mind, and tailored care, we can create an environment where people like Georgia aren't just existing, but they are actually still living, which is what they deserve, just as much as us who um, we live normal, healthy, mentally healthy lives do. They deserve to ha live out their days with joy and laughter and create even more memories and just feel wrapped in the love of their families and friends. So with that, I want to say I'm genuinely grateful that you took this journey with me today, um, exploring the intricacies of human stories. And as we part for now, I want to leave you with a simple request. Just stay curious, stay passionate, and remember that empathy is the bridge to connecting all of our stories. So until our paths cross again, take care and cherish all the ones around you. Have a beautiful day.